to my eyes, the periorbital area is a wonderful, almost chronological barometer of aesthetic changes within a patient's face. And the sort of things that we tend to see is skin laxity, and this will manifest itself in hooding, where a patient will tell you, I, I can't um, see my upper eyelid, or if I put on some eyeshadow, um, I can't see where it goes. So hooding comes as a consequence of a couple of things. Obviously, skin laxity itself is one. But the second thing that tends to happen, I suppose, is that we get gravity bringing down the muscles of the frontalis and the eyebrow, so we can get a, a lateral brow ptosis. The other things that we need to look at in that area is hypertrophic um, orbicularis oculi. And um, to an extent, the laser resurfacing by skin tightening can almost treat as well. Instead of Anne having fat pads on the knees and eyes here, what you can actually see is she's got some fat atrophy, and this has given rise to teardrops. And as a consequence of that, we may even fill this with some, I prefer hyaluronic acid, tend to go all the way sort of below the orbicularis muscle when I'm doing it, um, onto the level of the superperiosteum, and place it there. And I find that after two or three treatments that um, the patient in some ways has built up probably enough collagen themselves that the um, problem with the teardrops tends to disappear. There's been a lot of problems in Europe with um, products being put in there that shouldn't have been put in there. And particularly Mertz has had a product, product recently that was pulled that um, I was very um, adverse to using myself until it had been used by more people. But certainly, um, hyaluronic acid, particularly Restylane, probably Juvederm as well, is, is very, very safe in that area. So we, we know clinically also the photo aid skin tends to be more wrinkly, blotchy, and, and even leathery around the eyes. And um, eyelid laxity in some patients can call, cause um, ectropion or even entropion. And um, we can even get epiphoria or laxity of the medial or the lateral canthal tendal. And there's not, or there has been, I suppose, until now, a variety of dermatological treatments available, such as dermabrasion, maybe even botulinum toxin, radiofrequency. But um, I have found that certainly um, fractionized resurfacing is a wonderful either adjunct to Blepharoplasty, surgical blepharoplasty, or else even that um, it can be used um, as a standalone treatment, particularly in patients who have got some level of herniation of the infraorbital fat pad. The tightening of the skin is enough almost to cause an effect. And I think we get two different effects, one almost immediately, particularly if you do a double pass, you'll see the skin tightening underneath the eyes. Now, within a period of you know, a week or two also, I find that we get also delayed tightening. I think it works probably through myofibrils, and as new collagen um, is produced, I often check patients at three months, six months, and nine months, and, and, and it's quite obvious the difference in terms of infraorbital fat pads, um, how they have um, retracted, in some cases they're almost gone. If this patient had improbable fat pads, I find that sort of, you know, when I press on them to cause the herniation, if they run very far laterally in terms of the sort of, um, the little sort of line from in the in, in, in limbuscus area, that they um, probably are more suitable for a surgical blepharoplasty. If they just run to the mid-pupillary line or a little beyond, then um, the fractionalized laser tends to give a nice effect and also can cause a little lift um, within the eyebrow itself. I tend also to use Botox in association with this. And um, probably Anne has got a family at home, and she knows well that um, if you're ironing a shirt, you're probably better off straightening it out first on the table. It makes it much easier to iron. And it's pretty much the same with us when we're doing eyes. If you have got a lot of wrinkles within the skin, um, you have to follow, obviously, the laser to the lowest level to achieve the same effect. If you use some Botox, and um, the lines tend to um, reduce, then as a consequence, the laser is much easier to use. 
But I also find that the, the big benefit, obviously, is the fact that you're almost preserving your work in plaster Paris. So it's almost like somebody had a broken leg and you are, are sort of putting it in plaster Paris and allow it to heal. Then if you have Botox done five weeks, sorry, five days or a week beforehand, then by the time that um, the laser resurfacing is done, you'll get a much better effect because it's going to preserve your work because the Botox or Desport, as in, in our instance, probably won't wear off for another four to six months. Sometimes with patients, it's good to make them aware just how red they can get. Now, I have two different levels of photographs here. That's probably closer to the truth, but there's no harm in some ways showing a patient how on their diary, from immediately after, eight hours afterwards, one day later, three days later, five days later, I'll go through this cyclical process where they get red and red erythema. So I think whenever you do that, it tends to not have a situation where patients want to get scared, but sort of going to be a three of what's happening here. So um, I think prevention is of problems is always preferable. So if patients are prepped beforehand, then they know the yeah, the problems the Sometimes they can think for a second or two, but the good anesthetics will not cause any difficulty. I'll need to get another one for that. Sylvia may ask me a couple of questions, but that's about it, you know. Well done, huh? That's perfect for us. La 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 la. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, Anne's handling that quite well. So I'm going to take advantage and put things up to 175. And I can put my density up to 3 as well. And see how we go now. Can you handle that all right? Thank you, okay. I'm done. I'm just about done. You have to run the water on there. Open up your eyes, sir. Thank you. Look up turn. Okay. Just step for step. Okay, you finished anyway? Okay. Okay, thank you. That's good. I'm finished in minutes now. Yeah. Thanks, Tom.